This is Joe Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you, and this is one I know many of you guys have been waiting for. This is the 2013 Seed Catalog Throwdown. And uh, so what I'm going to do is actually share uh, all the seed catalogs that I got sent to me this year. And you no, know, there's most of the good ones I got. And yeah, there's some few companies that probably didn't get their seed catalog. So uh, you guys need to put me on the mail list and send it to me next year. So it'll be in the next year's seed catalog roundup. In any case, I didn't do a seed catalog roundup last year because I was actually too busy growing food and then making a video for you guys. Plus, I don't think I got a lot of the catalogs. But this time, we're back in full force. So the first thing I want to say is that I personally believe it's always best and least expensive to start your plants from seeds instead of buying the little transplants or the starts at a local nursery or big box store. That being said, if you are a new gardener, right? If you're a noob, and I know you guys are out there, if you're a noob, I highly encourage you guys to, you know, uh, buy a lot of your own plant starts because this will ensure your greater success in the long run. And I want you guys to build on your successes. You know, if you're a noob and you want to save some money, I encourage you to maybe at least buy half your plant starts that are healthy, you know, from a local nursery or big box store and plant those out because now you'll know you're going to at least have half your stuff, have a fairly good chance of surviving. And then the other half, buy some seeds and start them yourself because they are a lot more inexpensive to do this way. Plus, when you grow your own and buy some of the seeds from the seed catalogs that I'm going to share with you guys, you have a lot more options because, you know, if you go to a standard big box store, they might have five or ten varieties of tomatoes to buy. But in these catalogs, there's literally hundreds of varieties of tomatoes to choose from. So, you know, and that's the same with some of the more exotic and different type crops that I talk about in my show I mean you just literally can't find them anywhere to buy the plant starts so you got to start the seeds yourself so that's number one number two I want to talk about you know uh, the method the seeds are grown and this could kind of get really lengthy here but I'm going to try to keep it short for you guys so I know many of you guys might eat organic food you know that you buy at your local health food store or whatnot because you know you don't want to purchase foods that are sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and fungicides which may lead to suicide and furthermore you know a lot of conventional agriculture you know doesn't have the highest and isn't growing the highest quality foods you know now unfortunately not all seeds are available organically so if you want I don't know purple atomic carrots you may not be able to find them organic so does that mean oh if I can't find the organic seed for purple carrots then I'm not gonna grow them at all well you know I don't want you guys to throw the baby out with the bath water you know uh, you know I always encourage you guys to do the best you can and find some of those unique and rare varieties right and even if you gotta buy them that they're not certified organic they may be they may not be but if they're not certified take them grow them out and save your own seed so now you'll have a good organic stock to grow from and can use your seed over and over again so many of these seeds, you know, you can grow once and then save them the following year and keep growing them. Now, that being said, this opens a whole new can of worms, which we'll talk about next, which is open pollinated versus hybridized versus GMO. Do I say, dare say GMO on my show? Well, number one, we're not going to talk about GMO. I do not recommend in any way, shape or form you actually grow GMO crops or even eat them. And unfortunately, if any of you guys are, you know, eating a lot of packaged processed foods, you know, with a lot of different ingredients like corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup and, you know, corn meal that's not organic, you know, you guys probably are consuming, uh, you know, foods that are grown with GMO crops. And I don't recommend you guys doing that. So ditch the GMO. I'll not be talking about any GMO crops in any of these seed catalogs today. So that leaves us with open pollinated and hybrid. So what's the difference between open pollinated and hybrid? Because you'll see that in these seed catalogs. It's, sometimes it'll say hybrid or sometimes it'll say F1 after the name. And what that means, it's a hybrid. So that means if you grow that plant and you buy the seeds for, you know, uh, cherry tomatoes that are hybrid F1, you grow that cherry tomato and then the next year you save your cherry tomato seeds and you plant them again, you're not going to get the same exact variety of cherry tomato. You might, but chances are you're going to get something a little bit different because the hybrid seeds don't breed true. 
Now, so that's the hybrid. Now, do I, does John say, don't grow hybrids, man. They're, they're genetically modified. No, Hi hybrids are not genetically modified. They just won't breed true. Nothing really wrong with them. They've been bred for certain characteristics. And, you know, you could breed those uh, characteristics out of the hybrid seeds back into the normal seed. If you grow those seeds out for like six, seven generations, you'll have a, a stable non-hybridized version of that hybrid. And I encourage everybody to do that so now we could grow non-hybrid versions of the hybrids and then they'll be open pollinated by that point. So that's the hybrids. So the next thing we're going to talk about is open pollinated. What does open pollinated mean? So open pollinated means if you grow, you know, dinosaur kale and it's open pollinated seed, then um, you save your seeds, you grow it again, provided it's not, you know, uh, cross pollinated with some other plants in your garden and you save the seed, then you'll have the same exact plant year after year after year. This way, you'll be able to save your seeds and be sure that you're gonna get, you know, what you grew the year before. I personally like the genetic roulette of growing hybrids, letting seeds drop, and just seeing what happens, because, you know, that's how new varieties are invented, and your new variety may be better or, unfortunately, worse than the uh, variety that you originally started with. <laughs> so I approve all open pollinated and hybrid seeds. I do not approve, once again, the GMO seeds. Another thing that you may hear about is the heirloom seeds. So heirloom seeds are open pollinated seeds that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation, you know, that basically are from older times and not from modern breeding programs. <laughs> not to say that modern breeding programs aren't good seeds, but the heirlooms kind of have more of a history and people have developed these seeds over time to have certain characteristics in them. For example, some characteristics could be you know, growing certain crops to overwinter in upstate New York, which actually we'll talk about in a little bit. And, you know, so if you live in New York, you will want to buy heirloom open pollinated uh, seeds from your specific area or your climate zone because those are the seeds that are more acclimated to your climate. So that's enough for my spiel about all some, just some of the terms because there's a lot more, but we're not going to go over those. Those are the main ones you need to know, uh, whether they're conventional or uh, organic, I always encourage you guys to buy organic if available, if not, that's all right, get the conventional. Um, but, oh, I didn't mention this, but in all cases, you always wanna get untreated seeds. Uh, some seeds you may buy may look like they're fluorescent colored and different colors like that, and that's you know basically some treated seeds that have chemicals on them. And I don't encourage you guys uh, growing treated seeds unless you can't find the seed any other way, but then, but then, you know, I recommend you guys search harder to find the untreated seeds of the varieties you want to grow. Uh, and then to sum it up, I think that open pollinated or hybrid F1s are okay to grow, but I prefer personally the open pollinated ones, but I'm not going to say, oh, it's a hybrid, I'm not growing it, right? Because hybrids just have been, you know, uh, bred to have certain characteristics in them and nothing wrong with them just because they won't breed true. You'll still get some amazing fruits or vegetables out of them. Okay, so on with the seed catalog throwdown. So stage number one of this seed catalog throwdown is we're gonna go over each of the seed catalogs. I'm gonna give you kind of like a, my take on it and plus a thumbs up or a thumbs down on it in general. Um, at the end, after we go through all the seed catalogs, then I'm gonna share with you my top favorite six seed catalogs of 2013. So first, we got uh, the Gurney Seed Catalog. Now, Gurney is a big seed and nursery company. They have a couple websites, and they always have a promotion like 50% off, you know, one item or, you know, $25 off your $50 purchase, which is 50% off. Now, that sounds like it's enticing. Like, man, I'm going to save a lot of money. But the problem is, basically, in my opinion, uh, Gurney's prices are basically overinflated by 50%. So when you get the 50% off coupon, you're getting the things at regular prices. Now, yeah, occasionally you'll be able to find a pretty good deal using the 50% off or the coupon deal they have, but in most cases, their prices are overinflated, so I'm gonna just go ahead and give it a thumbs down. <laughs> Next, we got the Pine Tree uh, Garden Seeds. This is at superseeds.com is the website. Now, I like actually Pine Tree. You know, for the first time I ordered from them this year, for some seeds that I couldn't find anywhere else or I could find other places, but they had the better pricing and so I ordered it from them. And let's see if I could find those in here. They actually were called right here. They're called 
uh, Typhon Holland Greens, 42 days. So this is a leafy green that grows relatively quickly and you could be eaten out of your garden instead out of the grocery store that much sooner. So here's the uh, little blurb on it. If you'd like to feed an army from the area of a size of a coffee table, this may be the vegetable for you. This brassic is a cross between Chinese cabbage and turnips. The greens mature very rapidly to a couple of feet. They can be cut early and often throughout the entire growing season. Unlike other brassica greens, Thai Fun contains no mustard oil, so the flavor is very mild. So that was 200 seeds for $1.35. So that's what I like about this catalog. You know, it tells you how many seeds and the price. And in most cases, the seeds are definitely under a penny each and even sometimes even less than that. I mean, here's one. Uh, arugula 500 seeds for $1.35 so this is definitely really good you know you get you don't get a whole lot of seeds but for the home gardener this is really nice the other thing that they did ship things to me relatively fast and they have you know a few uncommon things but they have a lot of common things too here's one right here uh, Malokia Malohikia <laughs> and that's actually what I call a Egyptian spinach so this is a very nutritious probably one of the most nutritious greens to grow even over and above kale, which we all know is probably one of the most nutritious greens, or people think it's the most nutritious, Malohia, or Egyptian spinach, blows that stuff away. So uh, on the pine tree garden seeds, definitely have to give them a thumbs up. All right, next, down to this one. This is called a turtle tree seed. So uh, this is Turtle Tree Biodynamic Seed Initiative. They're at turtletreeseed.org. Now let's see. Now the turtle tree seed. Don't let this catalog. It's a half, you know, uh, half size catalog fool you. There's basically only a few pictures, and you know, they just got basic descriptions of this and stuff. But what's really cool is they sell organic and biodynamic seeds, and uh, that's that's really impressive. You know, I don't think any other catalog really uh, bro sells biodynamic seeds. So what does this mean, biodynamic seeds? Basically, it means that you should be getting a higher quality seed than other seeds, and they were grown, uh, you know, without chemicals and all this kind of stuff. The other thing that's really cool about the turtle tree seed is that literally in the front of this, they have a little, like, uh, system where they give, like, two letters to each uh, uh, farm that grew seeds. And so you could look up SF means Summerfield Farm, Perry Hart, California, began biodynamic practices in 1997, and it tells, you know, uh, what they grow, where they're located, uh, their season dates, and their elevation uh, and latitude, and what kind of soil they have. So, if you live in Perry Hart, California, or somewhere in that area, or even in the geographic region, right, you're probably going to want to buy the seeds from that farm because they're going to do really good for you. And, you know, here's one in uh, F Philadelphia Community Farm in Verna Craigs, Wisconsin. And, you know, they have farms from all over the country in this uh, little seed catalog so you know I really like that about this uh, seed catalog uh, in addition they have some rare varieties that you know are gonna do well for you because they've been naturalized in your specific climate so here's one that's really cool corn salad New York hearty uh, it says 50 days also known as lamb's lettuce or mosh and I love the corn salad uh, is the most delicious winter salad green there is. Mild and nutty with the aromatic finish, this winter green has long been treasured in Europe and is now finding a following in the U.S. This strain was given to us by Henrik Holdergrege of the Nature Institute in New York. Hardy is the hardiest variety we've come across. It has overwintered, uncovered outdoors here in upstate New York for the last 16 years. Plant in greenhouse or outside in early spring to mid-fall. So if you live in upstate New York or, you know, that general geographic region, you can grow some corn salad that will overwinter in your garden without protection. So that's amazing. And that is the power of this little uh, seed company right here. And uh, another really cool specialty green that I know many of you guys may have been trying to find is the miner's lettuce. So I like growing the miner's lettuce and, uh, you know, it's uh, native to the American Northwest and anywhere in the uh, Northwest, even California, where I grow it grows really well it's a excellent tasty winter green uh, edible leafy green to be growing and uh, actually it's what the uh, the miners that came to California to strike gold that's what they were eating when they came here because guess what there wasn't any farming when the miners got to California so yes turtle tree seeds definitely have to give them the thumbs up all right next we got this one right here NE seed so that's NEC.com 
And, uh, you know, I like this catalog. It's a nice full-color catalog uh, laid out fairly well. And, you know, the one of the things I like, every different catalog has different pros and cons. Some of the things about this catalog is, the I don't know, the, depending on the uh, seed, the prices tend to be maybe a little bit higher than others. But one of the things I like about this is that they have some rare varieties from uh, Italy. So they have a lot of Italian seeds. So if you have Italian heritage and you want to grow some real Italian vegetables that come in Italian seed packets, and you better be able to read Italian, actually. Well, they have English translations. Uh, you want to get this catalog. So I like that. You know, I mean, I can't say, oh, you just only got to order the seeds from this one catalog because, you know, they have everything. Well, you know, unfortunately, there's no one seed catalog that has every seed in the world. You got to kind of pick and choose because one seed catalog might have this one and one seed catalog might have that seed that you want. So, you know, I like this seed catalog for that reason. Plus, it has really nice pictures and it's laid out really nicely. So, yes, have to give the any seed a uh, good old thumbs up. Next, <laughs> Osborne Seed Company LLC. So, the Osborne Seed Company, this is a new company that I actually ordered from this year. And uh, what they do is they mainly sell to farmers and people that are going to grow the crops to resell. And they will also sell to home gardeners. But the thing with them is that they sell in larger seed quantities. So if you have like a small garden, you're going to maybe want to go with pine tree because they sell small packets. This, you've got to buy like an ounce of seeds at a time or even larger. You know, for me, in some instances, like if I'm just going to seed a whole bed direct seed with like mosh or some other kind of greens where I don't care, I'm just going to just dump seeds out. This is an inexpensive way to buy seeds in bulk. Actually, I think I bought some mosh seeds from them in bulk so I could just sprinkle them all out and just let the rains rain on the seeds and see what happens. So it's kind of fun to experiment with. Um, let's see. I guess, you know, they do have a, a lot of uh, hybrid seeds, some organic seeds, and uh, most of the seeds, I believe, are untreated. And yeah, it, they have a pretty good layout on their catalog as well. So I guess Osborne Seed, definitely have to give them a thumbs up as well. Next, over to Stoke Seeds. Stoke Seeds is stokeseeds.com is their website. And uh, this is a GMO-free catalog, so I like that a lot. And it's been quality seed since 1881. You know, and the Stoke Seed catalog to me is just really nothing super spectacular. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. It's got nice color pictures and whatnot. And, you know, they sell things by the packet, by the ounce, by the quarter pound, by the pound, by the five pounds. So that's pretty cool. I mean, hmm, I can't really say anything super bad about Stokes, and I don't know that I really particularly like it, but I guess I'm kind of nice. I'll actually give it a thumbs up. And uh, next, all right, let's get to Johnny's. So Johnny's is probably one of my favorite seed catalogs because it is uh, definitely one of the best for the pictures. They have really nice pictures in there. Now Johnny's, uh, you know, basically focuses on selling to farmers, but they'll also sell to home growers, so they sell seeds by the packet, but also in bulk, and if you buy them in bulk, you usually get better pricing so you can actually uh, split them up and you know have a whole bunch of friends and neighbors uh, buy the seeds in a larger pack and then divide it you'll get a better deal than actually just buying a few smaller packs and uh, the reason why I like Johnny's is besides just the nice pictures here they have uh, sections of uh, seeds for sprouting which is really cool uh, they also have a section for growing microgreens which is really cool uh, and here's actually the microgreens pages here and so this is really cool. They also have a lot of organic and non-organic versions and also hybrid and open pollinated varieties. So actually, I think, I mean, pretty much I just got to sum it up. I just pretty much like <laughs> the Johnny Seed catalog. I would give it a thumbs up. All right, next, down to Jung Seeds and Plants. So on Jung Seeds and Plants, this is, I guess, a company that's been around for a long time. And this kind of reminds me of the Gurney's catalog without the special deals with a little bit lower pricing without all the scammy raise the price 50% so that you can use a coupon to get 50%. Uh, that being said, some of the reviews online for the Jung Seed Catalog, and actually, besides seeds, they also sell the plants. Actually, they sell probably more plants than just the seeds alone. You know, I, while they do carry a few, you know, uh, harder to find varieties, uh, you know, I'm not super impressed, and their prices aren't super the best either, and I don't know. I'm gonna have to give it a thumbs down. Next, oh, this one's cool. Next, let's go to Fedco. So Fedco Seeds, uh, you know, if you like Johnny's seed catalog and kind of what they have, then you're going to like Fedco even more. I mean, while I don't particularly care for the catalog, it's printed on newsprint and it's just black and white and 
It's not super shiny, super you know, special or nothing. But they have some cool illustrations and whatnot, kind of like old-timey-ish. But what I like about the Fedco is that, once again, th these uh, Fedco sells to the farmers, but they'll also sell to you guys at home. And probably the one thing I like about Fedco over Johnny's is that, in general, they have lower prices than Johnny's. Plus, you know, I, it really irks me that all these seed companies charge shipping, and shipping can be pretty expensive on a seed order, and seeds, they don't weigh much. One of the things I like about Fedco is if you do order seeds alone on your order and you order over $50, which let me tell you is not hard to do, um, then you get free shipping. So I like that a lot. So in general, they have a pretty good selection like Johnny's, but lower prices as well, although the catalog is not as fancy. So what you might want to do is get the Johnny's and the Fedco and uh, look at the nice pictures of Johnny's, see the greens, what they look like, see the plants, and then go over to Fedco and order them. But don't tell Johnny's I told you that. <laughs> All right. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Fedco, definitely good company as well. Going to go ahead and give them the big thumbs up. Next, Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. Now, these I've seen the Southern Exposure people at different events that I attend where they have their seed racks and everything, and they are really nice people. I like their catalog, too, because they have, you know, some unique varieties that you can't find, and they got, you know, nice uh, newsprint catalog with uh, color pictures, actually. Wow, this one looks cool. Damon Morgan's Kentucky Butcher Corn. And uh, wow, it's all different kind of colors. So they have some, you know, pretty rare varieties. And, you know, I don't know. I think it's a pretty good uh, catalog. And they actually have the New Zealand spinach, which is a good summer spinach. It's actually high in oxalic acid. Don't care to care for it too much. But they also have the red Malbar spinach, which actually I like much more than New Zealand. But yeah, overall, I guess I have to say, uh, give a Southern Exposure Seed Exchange a good thumbs up and it's southernexposure.com is our website all right next let's get down to the granddaddy of seed catalogs this over all the other seed catalogs that i've talked about so far is the prettiest by far seed catalog and anybody would love to see this on a coffee table because this is like one of those books like a coffee table book you'd have and you could open up to any page <laughs> and they have excellent colored pictures and actually uh uh color pictures of the actual crops that you're going to be able to grow and besides that they also have it chock full of information they'll have a recipe scattered here once in a while they'll also have a big section in the front where they talk about what is a gmo so if you don't know what a gmo is you definitely want to just get this catalog to read this article so you'll be fully informed uh, the baker creek seed company has a you know a safe seed pledge and actually i've purchased from them many times in the past uh, their website is very simple. It's rareseeds.com. So the Baker Creek Seed Company, oh, here's even an article on five steps to saving your tomato seeds. So not only are they selling your seeds, they're going to teach you how you can save them too so you won't have to buy them again next year. So I like that a lot. But, uh, yeah, they have all kinds of different varieties, like I think over 1,100 easily, maybe 1,200 varieties. And they have a cool one, actually, that's a good summer green. It's called Strawberry Spinach. So this this is uh, related to the lamb scorters, make the leaves you can't eat, but makes little spinach berries. Now, they're not like strawberries. They're, they're like seed pods that are red, and they don't have too much of a flavor. But they're a unique and interesting curiosity. I grew them once, and then they didn't come back again. Maybe I'll grow them again this year. But, yeah, they have a lot of cool, neat, neat seeds in here that you just got to check out. Plus, I mean, the pictures in here kick some royal butt. <laughs> so, yes, rare seeds. Dot com Baker Creek thumbs up all right down to the next one next one is natural gardening company so one of the things on the tagline it says oldest certified organic nursery in the United States so that's really impressive uh, while that is impressive uh, what isn't impressive is their catalog their catalog you know while it's uh, cool it's laid out well their prices aren't maybe the best and um, I don't know their selection isn't too good and they do have a lot of mostly organic seeds in here one of the nicest things is that this company will also sell you the plants directly. So if you don't want to germinate the seeds yourself, they'll sell you healthy plant starts by the dozen and ship them to you. No, oh, that's a cool one. Watermelon radish. So yeah, they got some cool pictures in there. Overall, I have to give the Nature Natural Gardening Company thumbs down. Just kind of overpriced. Not a wide selection. Nothing unique, new, and different. All right, next catalog right here. This is called the Bountiful Gardens Catalog. It's bountifulgardens.org. And uh, in Willits, this is a nonprofit organization. So, you know, I like seed 
not even companies, but organizations that sell seeds to keep their organization funded so they, they can continue the good work they're going to do. So the Battleful Gardens catalog is actually uh, from uh, John Jevons and his organization to teach biointensive farming, you know, which is very similar and has a lot of crossover with the square foot gardening that I do. So one of the nice things in this catalog is actually they share the biointensive farming plant spacing because if you pick up any back of the pack, they're not talking about the spacing for your home gardener. They're talking about spacing for the field and people growing it in the field to, you know, be in a farming. But when you're growing it in your backyard, whether it's in a containers like I am here or raised beds in the back there, you could plant things in a lot, lot tighter density, especially if you have the, uh, you know, good soil in there. So the Bountiful Garden, the reason why I like them besides being a nonprofit, uh, their catalog's pretty basic. It's just basically on a newsprint, but it has good color photos. Uh, they have a lot of exotic and unique varieties that you can't find anywhere else. I mean, here's one right here. It's called Low Acid Spinach, Manopa, 50 days. For years, this was one of our most popular vegetables and we imported the seeds from England and the seed became unavailable. And we have now been working with small growers ever since to grow this spinach in the U.S. We're happy to announce that we now have a good supply, certified organic, of this wonderful mild flavor, sweet and tender spinach. Lowest oxalic, oxalic acid content of any variety means not only great flavor, but the iron and calcium in the leaf are more available. So yeah, that's definitely one of the seeds I want to get this year. So if you buy that one, hey, send me a couple seeds. <laughs> but yeah, they have all kinds of cool stuff. They also have the uh, Egyptian spinach and a lot of other cool varieties. And in addition, for those of you guys that are looking to uh, grow oil seeds or compost crops, they have sections of that too for oil crops, compost crops as well, grains and fiber crops. And they also sell actually a hand crank home oil press called the Pit of a Press, uh, imported from Europe. And that's definitely a really cool uh, device to uh, press your own seed oils out of it. Also, they have a whole lot of different herbs and whatnot and organic uh, growing uh, paraphernalia in here. So yes, definitely got to give Bountiful Gardens or Ecology Action a uh, thumbs up. Next, oh man, we're getting down the end here. Uh, Kitazawa Seed Company's next. That's at kitazawaseed.com, K-I-T-A-Z-A-W-A-S-E-E-D.com. And this is the standard catalog. It's uh, basically uh, two color, black and green, and they have a few pictures. Now, the reason why I like the Kitazada Seed Catalog is because number one, they're from the Bay Area, which is really cool. It's a family-owned business. Number two, they offer you Asian vegetable seeds. So some of these seeds, you know, especially if you're a standard American and not Asian, you're, you're probably going to never have seen these before unless you went into an Asian supermarket to buy some greens and some vegetables in there. So, uh, you know, I like the ethnic vegetables, whether they're from Italy, from, you know, Asia, or from wherever they come from, because these are the different things that we want to, you know, create genetic diversity in our gardens and grow some things that are from Asia, grow some things that are from Italy and see what's going to do best in your neck of the woods. But yeah, I like, I like this a lot. So one of the coolest things in this catalog, besides all the different varieties of the Asian greens, is they have an edible flower uh, mixture. So all the seeds in this packet are all edible. So just throw it out. It'll grow a bunch of flowers and yes, you can eat them all. So yes. Definitely thumbs up for Kitazawa Seed. Oh, I think this is our last official seed catalog. This is the Seed Savers Exchange catalog. And uh, Seed Savers Exchange uh, 2013 catalog of heirloom and open pollinated seeds, books, and gifts. And I definitely like the Seed Savers catalog. I mean, once again, you know, while they do have a lot of more common varieties, they have some really unique varieties that you're probably not going to find anywhere else. Here's a little section in the middle here that we can open up and here's one uh, old timey blue collar donated to seed savers exchange in 1989 by Ralph Blackwell of Alabama in his donation letter Ralph described how this variety has been growing in his family for over a hundred years Ralph has since passed away but the variety is still being grown by his brother Barry Barry says the family preferred this collar over other varieties and always planted it in the fall as it flavor sweetened up after the frost Ralph and Barry's mother Ira would use the leaves to make a dish similar to sauerkraut. Brassica olacera. Attractive plants grow to two feet tall, broad blue-green leaves with undulating leaf margins and purple stems and veins. Very good eating qualities. So, I mean, I've never heard of that variety of collards before, and I think I want to even grow that one. Purple collards. 
I love my plants of color. But yeah, there's all different kinds of heirloom varieties, and some of them even have like little write-ups. Here's one called the Collier Cucumber. Hey, maybe I need to grow that. Actually, it's Collier, C-O-L-L-I-E-R. I'm Kohler. <laughs> Anyways, that's a nice little uh, white cucumber there. But yes, definitely have to give the big thumbs up to Seed Savers Exchange. So that's the end of the seed uh, catalog throwdown. But we have two more catalogs here I want to go over. Uh, number one is this one, One Green World. And this is onegreenworld.com. Now, this is not necessarily a seed catalog. This is a plant and tree and fruit tree catalog. And uh, this gets special mention. Uh, I have ordered from them before. I have visited their facilities to see it. And, you know, this is the fruit tree catalog you want over all others. Why? Because you're not just going to find regular apricots and apples and stuff in here. You're going to find cool, unique fruit trees that are from, like, Siberia and all over the world that are going to do well in your climate, especially if you live not in California, you know, where you get cold over the winter and stuff. They have hardier fruit trees that are going to produce delicious fruits. And while some of these fruits are not as sweet as their, you know, modern counterparts, they're rich in phytochemicals, antioxidants, and nutrition. And actually, the plants are going to be more hardy and more disease resistant than growing standard fruit trees of this day and age. So for that reason, I really encourage you guys to uh, check this catalog out. You can visit their website. They have a lot of my favorite uh, fruits in here, American persimmons, pineapple guavas. I mean, you'll learn just reading this catalog, you'll get an education on some of the cool varieties of fruits that you may not have known about previously. So yes, thumbs up for the One Green World. Last catalog we got here, this is not a seed catalog or a plant catalog. This is the Gardener Supply Company catalog. So it's gardeners.com. So while they don't sell seeds or plants, Gardener Supply is my number one favorite catalog for cool, unique, and innovative products that will let you grow more food at home because they have all kinds of different raised bed kits and lighting kits and staking and trellising kits. And you know, while some of the prices are fairly expensive, this may give you ideas on how you can create your own or do something very similar to what they're doing for less money by being ingenuitive, if that's a real word. So gotta give the Gardener Supply Catalog big thumbs up. And that's all the catalogs. Next, we're gonna go ahead and share with you my six favorite catalogs of 2013. So now we're gonna have the countdown, my six favorite seed catalogs of the year. So if you don't get any of the others, you gotta get these guys. Uh, we'll start at number six first. So number six, Johnny Select Seeds. I really love their catalog. It's beautiful, nice pictures. They have a wide selection. Uh, maybe they cost a bit more than some other ones, but you know, they also have, it's packed of information. Just getting the seed catalog and reading through each and every page, you'll learn about so many different varieties of plants, plus learn about microgreens and you know, differences in all kinds of different things. So yeah, number six, Johnny Select Seeds. They're at uh, johnnyseeds.com. Next to number five, Seed Savers Exchange, we just talked about this. I like the catalog, nice full color pictures. The thing I wanna buy in here is actually called the caterpillar plant. It makes these little fruit things that look like caterpillars and you could put them in a salad and, and really freak some people out uh, when they're gonna eat a salad. So yes, number five, Seed Savers Exchange and their website is seedsavers.org. All right, number four is Turtle Tree Seed. We talked about this earlier, their website is turtletreeseed.org. I like them because they're biodynamic, but more importantly, they specify the farm your seeds came from. So now you can know the farmer, the uh, you know the elevation, uh, where specifically they're growing, and if you're growing in that area too, those seeds are going to be the seeds you want to buy for the highest level of success. So yes, number four, turtle tree seed. Down to number three. Number three is Fedco. I like Fedco more than Johnny's. I don't particularly care for the you know, black and white catalog that's pretty much nondescript, but I do like their prices and that they offer free shipping over $50 of seeds alone. So the website for Fedco is fedcoseeds.com. All right, down to number two. Number two favorite seed catalog is Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. I love Baker Creek a lot. This catalog is the most beautiful catalog. Plus they have a wide variety of things to grow. Actually, here's one, the Jelly Melon. That one probably is going to be, you're going to need a nice long season to be successful with the jelly melon. They have so many different varieties of plants and the catalog is just beautiful. You can order the catalog at rareseeds.com. And top catalog of the year, for me anyways, is the 2013 Bountiful Gardens catalog. Now once again, 
I like Bountiful Gardens because they have some rare varieties of seeds that you literally can't find anywhere else. Plus, you're supporting a nonprofit organization to help people grow more food all over the world, literally. And so that's why I like them. Uh, not only their philanthropic aspects, but they also have a lot of different seeds. Herbs, oil crops, grain crops, cover crops, basically seed mixes, wildflower mixes. They got the, the hard to find sea kale, just all kinds of cool stuff. So you want to check out their website and their, uh, their seed catalog at bountifulgardens.org. It's getting dark. I got to get going. I got dinner waiting inside and uh, I got to get going. I got a bunch of other things to do in the garden before it gets too dark. In any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode 2013 Seed Catalog Throwdown, sharing with you my thumbs up or thumbs down on the seed catalogs, plus my top favorite six catalogs that you got to get to order some seeds from this year to grow wide variety in your garden. Now, overall else, I always want to encourage you guys to grow diversity. Diversity is the key to success and the key to beauty in life. Um, with, by growing diversity in different seeds and different types, you'll find out what's going to work best in your area. Also, you're going to find out which ones you like to eat better. So then once you find that out, then you're going to want to grow the ones that do the best and that taste the best to you because everybody has different tastes. And depending on where you are, some seeds may grow better than others. Uh, be sure to check the link down below because I may have uh, dis special discounts for you, my viewers, that's going to be in the description there. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep on growing.